Attention passengers. This is your co-pilot speaking. Your pilot is black mind, so you are not going blind and there is no power failure. You are merely experiencing the immense blackness of his proximity, and when you hear his voice, you and the cabin will get even darker than you are currently. We will be cruising at the speed equal to light, because the one other thing that travels equally fast is darkness. Your loved ones awaiting your arrival may not recognize you at first sight. This is normal. Simply tell them about the pilot, and they will understand. We will taxi to the wrong way now, so please buckle up and prepare for a high-speed departure. Thank you for choosing Jet Black Airways, where the phrase Jet Black is also a verb. We hope you keep jetting black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off. Justice forever. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Um, that being said, look, we got these um, these ops, and I'm going to go ahead and reply to them in this one. So if you know a lady that's always talking that crap, man, y'all just this, that, and the other, go ahead and share this with her. And also, if you know a gentleman that's listening to these dating roaches and game roaches, share this with him. First, I'm going to talk to you gentlemen that are listening to these dating roaches, and I'm going to assume that you're listening to them because of what you've been told and what you've not been told, therefore what you simply didn't know. And I don't blame people for things they just don't know. If you're one of those gentlemen with whom one of my audience members has shared this link, um, then it is because it is known between you and such sharer of the link that you listen to the dating roaches. You call them dating coaches or game coaches. And I don't blame you for what they're not telling you because they're the ones not telling you this. But more and more of them know this over time. As time goes on, they know. And some of them have turned around and they have had to backtrack on things they said about uh, the BMPTs. And BMPT is just my acronym for Black Male Passport Travelers. But that includes under its umbrella SYSBM, which is me, SYSMB, which is also me. And that is, these are acronyms for Save Yourself Black Man and Save Yourself Muslim Brother. Both of those apply to me. Also, IBMOR, Introspective Black Men on Reform. We are those who believe in, in marrying black women if you can, but not from the West. And, and those are, I believe in that, but not as a necessity. So I don't know if IBM or WAR count me amongst, amongst themselves or not. SYSBM and SYSMB actually do apply to me in case you're wondering. But more importantly about all of us and not just me, there are also Passport Bros and Passport Gang included. And then Blue Book Gentlemen. We come under the umbrella of BMPT. You have not been told that when you live outside of the West, you're probably listening to me now from the United States or from the UK maybe from another uh, anglophone nation in the americas maybe from a western european nation some are tuning in from even south africa and australia those are the highest likelihoods of your location if you were are listening to this because someone shared a link with you and keep this in mind you are being told of uh, certain things by these dating roaches about women's nature which is not wrong for them to tell you and about what women want naturally which is good for them to explain to you but you are not being told about how the culture and the nurture changes when you leave first world economies and jurisdictions you are being told that we BMPTs are going to third world nations so that we can do things that are illegal as if we can use a U.S. passport and greenbacks to bribe our way out of situations like that. What you're not being told is that people in these regions are so morally outraged by the things that um, you were told we would do that we would not be able to bribe. Because think about it, if you are a cop in one of these nations and uh, you were then called to go and pick up a Westerner who's doing the unspeakable and you've been given evidence that they've done the unspeakable. This is not an accusation, but rather some evidence shown to you. And you're just going to go make the arrest and you walk up and tell him to put his hands up or put his hands behind his back. And he says, listen, I got money. I got Yankee dollars. See, got this passport. I'm going to give you some money to go away and act like I wasn't here. You're going to take his money and still put the handcuffs on him because of the outrage of what he did. 
Do you think that none of these cops has ever had that idea in mind if they were sent to actually pick up someone that not only did the unspeakable, but traveled from a, a, a nation in which the prisons are comfortable and safer to go to his nation to do it? You are being fed a bag of lies that don't really make sense once you know what it's like to live abroad, which I've done for the last eight years. You have not lived abroad, which is why you're in the jurisdiction of these uh, dating roaches and game roaches. And you're going to find out why I keep calling them roaches instead of coaches. It's not hatred. It's because they're lying to you. See, you were taught to think that the way that the Western woman is acting is normal. And it's not. That's actually not the case. See, what is true is that women are picky, the finicky. They like about 15 percent of guys that they see visually. And that's that's it. That's all. That's normal and that's okay. But what you're not being told is that the Western woman is trained so that all of them will pick the same less than 15 percent, somewhere between 13 to 7 percent. Which number, which percentage of guys it is that they like depends on which dating app did which study in which year. But what is consistent across all of them is that the women, all of them want these same few guys. So in other words, your sister's 15 percent. It's not her own 15 percent and her taste are her own. That's not it. And then her friends are her own and then her cousins are her own and your mothers are her own. That's not how it works. They are trained by the hive mind in the West so that their 7 to 13 percent will all coincide with each other's 7 to 13 percent. In other words, they're not choosing the men on their own. And so that means that the women that would find you to be in their own personal 15 percent are now down to 13 to 7 percent. That has to coincide with every other woman's because they're taught that if they're not competing for the same few men, they're stupid and they're SLUTs. The shame that they should feel for being SLUTs and 304s has been replaced with the shame of going for a man that other women don't want, being seen out in public with and validating a man that other women don't want. That's why they always want the drama and that's why they keep saying that men do this, that and the other, break hearts, disloyal, that sort of thing. They keep saying this because they only want the same few men that are being overwhelmed with options. And then these exceptional men can quickly put themselves out of the exception once they actually commit. So you take a man that looks like Garfield Bright from the group Shy. I know I have a childhood friend that looks like that. And if he's one of those that has the options, but he's not going to overindulge for moral or safety reasons, and he's going to play it safe and he's going to commit to one at a time. Then what happens is that the women stop checking for him because he's not being seen out with a bunch of other women and he's committing himself. They see that and, and then it becomes never mind. He falls under the radar. He's just nice to look at, but he doesn't have that. And, and he, he, he doesn't have that fill in the blank that women like. And the woman are going, when you ask them, okay, look at this sentence. He doesn't have that fill in the blank uh, that we like. Ask them to go ahead and fill in that blank. And they're going to fill the blank in with je ne sais quoi, which is just French for I don't know what. Or... Um, that umph, or they're going to make some sound that doesn't have a meaning because they're simply trained to be difficult. That's why when you talk to female friends that are friends on your butt, they talk like confused kids. Well, I mean, he is, but he kind of isn't. You know what I mean? Or she was like, she was pregnant, but she wasn't really pregnant. They start saying things that don't make sense because they can, because we let them be stupid and childish and still have the option to reproduce. That's why they can do dumb and goofy things and it's cute and funny and we're still trying to get up in them drawers. And we do things that are normal and very conventional and get blamed for them. You've been lied to about what it's really like when you leave and about what it's naturally like, how it really shakes out. You've been lied to about this. And these dating roaches can only lead you into open marriages in which random dudes are smashing their wives and they have to struggle to compete because women can get dangling more easily than you can get the, uh, get the punani. So in order for you to make things even, you're constantly on a, a, a hamster wheel. Meanwhile, she's just plowing through penises. But you're the husband and you're the one that's responsible. Or you get to um, uh, wind up a stepdad before you're a dad. These are the options that you're going to be offered if you follow them. They're, they're charging you 4000 
to take these courses so that and, and then they've charging you four thousand to take the course and then when you pay the four thousand what they do is they come with the final tuition and all they teach you in the tuition is okay you need a new wardrobe you need a new car you need a new place to stay they tell you to change your life and all of that costs more money so you pay them money good money for them to tell you how to spend more of that money that you no longer have because you just pay them to make your to give yourself appearances that these broads wants and then and even then when you've done all of this what do you qualify for a four so you've got to become an indebted appearance of an eight nine or ten to qualify for a four that's what they're not telling you so when I preach about, you know, male chastity, one of the reasons I preach about that, well, I mean, that's one of the, that's actually the major reason I preach about it. Male chastity, because frankly, uh, it, that's the only thing that's really going to help you out in the long run and then help out any, uh, any of your descendants. But listen, you've been lied to. And I'm going to tell you the assumption that underlines the ability for them to lie to you. I'm not blaming you unless you've heard this for a while unless you've already heard both sides and you're still with the dating roaches and the game roaches. Well, then, of course, I do blame you. But you know what? Nobody should share a link with you anyway. And if someone did, they were being nice. But if you still believe in what they're saying, you need to fuck the shuck up. Just go ahead and give me your money and let these women uh, ruin you. Let the worst of the women out there do the ruining because you believe that they can't help themselves. And that they're just being who they are and it's your job to be Superman to qualify for Lois Lane. Now, if you're one of those that has not heard both sides and you've only heard the dating roaches and game roaches side, then, well, this link was shared with you rightfully so. And what I'm saying to you is that there's an assumption underlying their ability to lie to you. They must first tell you that you start off in the mating market with a negative value and you're not at fault for believing that in the beginning because that's the same thing that the ladies have shown you. Before they were even ladies, before you were even a man. You were shown and you were told starting your early life off that because you're a guy that you have a negative mating market value. That's what you're shown. Now, the funny thing is that uh, they blame you for being hetero if you are. But then if you act like a hetero male, then they, that's the reason why you have this negative value. That's what's funny about it. So you've been given this assumption by them and then the dating roaches uh, and game roaches don't come along and give you a whole new set of assumptions to make. They simply explain certain things in a way that would make sense. And then they don't tell you if they even know. Maybe they don't know. But by now, most of them do know what things are like abroad in more normal, natural settings. Because the West is not normal and natural in this regard. It is not at all. And then they've got you thinking, yes, it's natural for them to look up in the sky to try to find Superman who can fly instead of looking across on the ground for these men that are walking around. That's what they're going to tell you. They can't help that. No, 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 no. As convenient as that might be, if they can actually look up and see a man that can fly while they're just Lois Lane looking at Superman, as, as convenient as that would actually be if it were real, which it's not and never going to be, it's still not realistic and they are capable of snapping themselves out of such fantasies. They just won't. Because when they do, then they have to deal with what God actually made available to them. And well, they've already been trained and primed to hate that. And that's what you're not being taught. That the difficulty is not normal. That's why so many of them hit the wall and start crying. And those are the videos that the dating roaches and coaches probably will not show you. Because then that tells you where your power is. Now, moving on to those ladies that want to be opposition to passport bros. I'm SYSBM or SYSMB. I do not defend anyone's right, male or female, to fornicate, but I do defend passport bros and passport gangs' right to travel to get away from your funky behinds. But I'm going to address this one thing that you, uh, you hyena bitch has been saying. You've been sitting up and saying, y'all always making these videos about leaving, but y'all don't never show yourselves leaving. Number one, that's a damn lie. Because a man that you all like looking at, but you still couldn't treat right with some sense. Austin Holloman, he done shown himself abroad. At this point, he's got more videos abroad. As far as we all know, he's got more videos abroad than he does back when he was in the States. He's now moved to Salvador de Bahia. He has moved there. 
I'm trying my darnest to find a place to which to move. Next, I want you guys, uh, you ops. Sorry, I shouldn't call you guys because that's a compliment you don't deserve, but you do try to act like them. I'm a boss, bitch. Yeah, oh God, here we go with that. You sit up there and say these things, and then there's one, she was on more to life, and she had the, the nerve to try to make a thirst trap. She put on all the makeup and, and had her uh, memories hanging out and going through all these motions to try to make them jiggle talk about some, y'all always talking about leaving, but y'all don't never see yourselves leaving. What you're looking for is for guys, some of whom have already done this, including my black ass, who ain't even recorded much of anything back when I lived in the States. I started this current channel when I was already living here. And I've only got a few recordings that are recorded in, uh, uh, on U.S. soil. On Western soil in general, very few. So, and the thing is, when I record, sometimes I'm recording and then the call to prayer sounds. And you can hear it in the background. And I got to pause the recording, go pray, come back and, and hit the record button again and pick up where I left off. Sometimes you can tell that I've done it. So we're actually doing this from abroad. What you want is for us to have the camera phones on. Or the, I'm sorry, the phone cameras on. Record ourselves with the passports and the boarding pass so that you can find out our identities. Scanning them at the gates to the airport. Getting on the plane. Live streaming the whole thing for the whole 12 hours that we might be in flight. Or nine hours. Live streaming all of it as if the, as if the live stream is not going to lose connection when the plane leaves internet access areas. Going over open ocean. Like, like that's really what you're doing. It's really what you're expecting to prove to you that we left. You got videos of brothers out here doing that. They're showing you themselves. Well, and maybe they can't live stream it, but they're showing you themselves walking through uh, uh, as much as these airports and these nations governments will allow. They're walking through these passport control areas, baggage claim, talking to people in different languages, showing you where they are. And you can tell it's not somewhere in the U.S. They're already doing that. How come y'all don't never actually show yourselves leaving? What you think BMT is doing? What you think I'm doing? And by the way, the reason, sister, that you're listening to this is because somebody, one of my normal audience, shared this link with you. Because you are sitting up talking all this stuff about how we always talk about leaving, but we don't never leave. That's part of the formula that you have. You were raised to have this, to follow this formula when you're, crit you're criticizing black men. Well, you talk about this, but you don't ever do it. No, see, now we're finally doing things and making moves and you're not a part of it. And you're not going to benefit from whatever the fruits of this are going to be either. Making moves, making investments, making efforts, and now you don't get to benefit from that. You, there's nothing in it for you anymore. You're just going to have to deal with and accept the fact that you are going to see us move away, literally up, up and away like the Superman for whom you kept looking up in the sky. And we're not carrying you with us. You're just going to have to stay by yourselves because you said that's what you wanted. And you can't even thirst trap brothers into staying. Even that doesn't work. Put on your little makeup, put the tight shirt on jiggle a little bit it, even that doesn't work brothers are gone matter of fact the one that covered that more to life uh the black philip i think he i think that's the one that calls himself the black filipino as well <laughs> that gentleman there is uh he was the one that covered this and he was covering from the territory of the philippines i'm in discussion right now with someone in the third nation trying to um, get my little shoddy dodgy bank here to accept the transfer to his country so that I can start something. I don't think it's going to work, but I'm trying anyway. If it does work, she who is going to benefit is traditional and respectful. And I actually get to act like what some dudes may call a simple if they're new to this whole red pill thing because she does not disrespect me so I, I get to spoil her I get to be uh, uh, I get to be this way with her not a doormat but I get to be caring and affectionate because I get it in exchange it's not taken for weakness I get to be nice because I can get away with that 
because it actually i don't even get away with it. it there's a reward for it i get to do that and and that's one of the reasons brothers are going brothers aren't going so that they can be mean to these women and and just get away with it that doesn't make any sense you're sitting up and making up these lies about what brothers are going to do like we think we're going to get away with that in somebody else's house we know how we've been made to look on television we know this we don't expect to go to these areas and commit a crime and get away with it the only black man that expects to do that is one specific psychological and 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 uh, childhood profile only one it is one tribe within one region of one country in the continent of africa it's not even that country it's one tribe within one region most of whom will never do anything illegal but most of whom who also will never condemn those who do things that are illegal they'll celebrate them as long as they succeed and that's where they run into trouble and they think nobody's on to the fact that it's them they think they succeeded in ruining the reputation of an entire nation Failing to realize that in actuality, they're profiled by their names coming from their particular tribe and language. Those are the only ones that think they're going to do dumb stuff and get away with it. And that's because they think everyone else is stupid. Even other tribes from the same nation. And even they don't think that they're going to do it openly and no one's going to come and get them. They think nobody's going to discover them doing any of these things. And most of the time, they do not involve crimes of this particular type of moral outrage or sexual deviancy like what you're saying. That's something you all are making up because you're hoping that other people will believe these stereotypes on TV and then just start moving against us in mass without any trials and start eliminating us for you. Because what you really want is for us to get killed because we couldn't hand you the same share of this world that you think that Brad was handing to the average Becky. But you're wrong about all of it. We're not going to commit crimes. The Filipina piece said so. We don't even think we can do that and get away with it. We're not going up so that we can be mean to these women and get away with it. We're going because we can actually get away with being nice. And most of us didn't go for that reason. We've traveled somewhere for work and then found this out and decided, hey, you know, we can stay because there's actually a future here. That's really what happened. You got all these rules about this is too soon to text back. Well, that's not soon enough. You got rules even about those things. Well, you can't wear uh, those shoes, but wait, wait, there's not really a right pair of shoes for you to wear anyway. You're coming up with arbitrary reasons to eliminate dudes from your future, and it's your right to choose who you want and not choose who you don't want, but you don't even exercise that particular right. You're letting the gynocracy choose for you individually. Failing to understand that the most bitter bitches are the ones who really run the gynocracy from within. The inner circle within the gynocracy is the most bitter bitches and all they're gonna tell you to do is shoot yourself in the foot because they don't want the competition. That's why they're older, got wrinkles around their eyes and they're telling you to, to keep on pushing these dudes away and then meanwhile they try to step in behind your back and come and get us. Hey young thing. The funny thing about even that is that a lot of guys ain't looking for them to be older. I'm one of those that really doesn't mind it. I'm going to tell you what would happen when I would let them know that the age was not a problem for me specifically. You know what happened? They would say, oh, well, you need someone younger. Oh, because I don't mind your age or because your age might actually be a plus for me for, with my psychological profile and maybe my DNA. Since it's OK with me, you don't sit up and say to me, I need someone younger. Oh, OK, all right. So what it really means that all y'all are doing is sitting up and telling brothers that whatever the hell it is that we do like, we need to learn to stop liking and whatever we don't like, we need to learn to like. And that's something that you and that older broad are in on. You're all in on that. But you got the nerve to sit up and say, we talking about leaving and ain't leaving. No, no, the ship is not, you know, the, the ship is not about to sail on you. The ropes are already coming off of the dock. That's what's happening. The ramp is already being pulled up now as we speak. The ship is about to be untethered to the dock. It's about to be undocked completely and it's going to start drifting out before the sails come up. Before the engine starts to move and propel the ship out of the harbor. And we're in that process right now of it beginning to sail. It's already too late to start boarding. You're already too late. But I'm going to tell you what is happening and then I'm going to shut up. I'm going to tell you why it is that we are talking about this anyway in the first place. I'm right now just trying to be a little bit nice to answer your stank behinds. 
What's really going on is that we're talking about it because we want to reach your sons. And I'm talking your minor sons that are still in elementary school playing with toys and watching Thundercats when they get home from school. We want to reach even them. At least I do. I definitely want to reach even them. So yes, we actually, or I do, I actually proudly plan to circumvent your parental authority and tell Junior about this so that Junior understands when he's young exactly what's going on so that when he gets old enough he will leave and he won't be your retirement plan unless unless of course you want to join him where he can make that good living and have that good life now if you're willing to do that that's great because I do believe that children should look after their parents as best we possibly can I do believe that I believe that more than my own parents believe that but what I also believe is that if he has to be uh, an independent man and pay his own bills because you ain't going to carry him all his life throughout his adulthood, then he has every right to go where he can get that best life within reason, of course. And then you, when you get older, you got to live where he's going to pay your rent. You got to live where he's going to put a roof over your head and you're going to eat what he brings home. He looks after you fine because you did that for him, but he does it on his terms as best he possibly can in a way that's most efficient, not only for him, but ultimately for your long term comfort. And most of you ain't willing to do that because no matter how old and decrepit you get, no matter how much you can't even go out no more and, and, and hit the club anyway, you don't want to live somewhere where you can't do these things. You don't want to live somewhere where you're not the matriarch. And that's part of the reason why I think that your, your minor son, Junior, needs to know about this. He needs to know that the game is rigged. And most other brothers, they're only talking to other adult, adult black men and saying to them, get that passport and bounce. It's better, better abroad. The water's fine here. Jump on in. They're doing it. I'm the one that's sitting up and saying, no, no, tell that young boy over there. The one that's wearing that Superman t-shirt. Tell him about the joys of living abroad. I don't mean uh, uh, the adult joys, the marital joys for me. I don't mean that, I'm, but I just mean tell him about how much better it can be. You live somewhere tropical, you ain't got to worry about winter. It's never too cold to play outside. You live in somewhere where the food is just great, nice and spicy. Are you living somewhere where education ain't too expensive? You live in somewhere where the rat race is not really a race and you don't have to be a rat to win. Just that sort of thing. You live in somewhere where you're not undervalued simply because you're a boy or a man. That's what I'm doing. You think these other brothers are bad? Oh man, you don't have you have no clue what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to do is nothing that's illegal. It's not even immoral. It's just very inconvenient to you. And that's what most of your country behinds deserve. Because you made these decisions. You decided to let the gynocracy make your choices for you. And every single thing, even when you sit up and say, well, you just mad because we use our choice and we don't want most of y'all. Ain't mad. I mean, I'm not mad about it. I'm mad because y'all lied. I don't respect your, your preferences and your choices because they're ucked up, they're animalistic, hybristophilic, uncivilized, barbaric, violent. That's what you want. Those are the guys for whom you'll do the most. I don't respect that, but I'm, I'm actually ticked off that you would lie and you turn around and lie to your own sons. Meanwhile, every time a dad raises his daughter, he's over preparing his daughter for men, over preparing her, which is a larger part of the problem. That, that's another the uh, nail in that coffin, but that's another topic for another day. So I've been going on for about a half hour and I've been doing that a lot lately. But I want you to understand that when you do hear us talking, we're really trying to reach out to each other. If we're not really trying to flex on you, I'm leaving. That's not what we're doing. What we're doing is we're talking to our brothers and we're saying, listen, it's goodbye for now. But get your passport and come join me later on and I'll meet you at the airport over there. That's really what's going on. I'm the one that's sitting up and saying, hey, 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 listen, look, man, I'm, I'm out. I'm already out. I just passport, but look, man, tell my nephew, tell your son, tell your nephew, tell our younger brother, you know, the one that ain't made it to middle school yet. Tell him about this, too. And tell him that big mama lied. Tell him that big sis lied. Maybe even mama lied. And if they didn't lie, they probably just didn't tell him what he needed to know. I'm the one that's saying that. So if you think these dudes are bad, come for me. 
And the truth be told, I've already got the proof and the receipts that everything I've been saying is not only moral, but also legal. So the minute, the minute somebody tries to affect my income, you will replace that income and even more. I hope that this helps. And understand this too, what I'm saying is any one of you sisters that might be listening that is not a part of this problem and does not support it should not be taking offense because if you come and you try to defend the ones at all or you try to correct me in any way, form or fashion, it only means you're one of the guilty ones. Either because you're doing the same thing, you want to do it, or because you're defending them for one of the other two reasons. That's it. One lady came in yesterday talking about some y'all are so full of hate. No, the F we're not. But in the end, she came to understand that what I was getting at is if she's not a part of that problem, she shouldn't have taken any offense in the first place. What I was getting at is something different than what she was talking about. So if you're one of those ladies that does not like this sort of stuff that the Western ladies are doing and lying to the men and, and trying to do to the men, then all you got to do is listen if you want to or not listen if you don't. You can say hello and wave and that's fine. But do not come in here trying to defend anybody that I just got through excoriating because I only excoriate the guilty. And I'll say to some of you, if you're one of those ladies that ain't doing these things in your, in your feelings because I'm talking about those who are, I'm gonna tell you what I tell my bad and my good students when I'm teaching. I get all kinds of students in my classroom when I, you know, when I am busy. Most of the time I was teaching the beginning of the university, first level, kids were coming fresh out of high school still had some of that high school mentality. And I'm gonna tell you what I told them when they came in at all levels. Some of them coming in bilingual, fluent already, it's just a formality for them. And others coming in and they weren't even supposed to be in my classroom because they hadn't learned the foundations in elementary, middle and high school they were supposed to learn before they could even pass the entrance exam to get into my class. I had all of them. And no, even though I'm an English teacher, I was not very nice to the ones to whom I would speak very slowly with basic sentences. They would look at me like a deer caught in the headlights because my class was not designed to start them off from ABC 123. So don't come to me and say, Black Mind, you said you're an English teacher, so why don't you teach them instead of being mad? No, no, no. I'm supposed to start from a, from a particular level. That's the system. They came in underneath that level. How did they pass the test? They cheated. End of. And I would tell them, listen, how did you get to my class if you don't understand me? I would ask him in Arabic, how did you get into this classroom without understanding the very basics that you're supposed to already know? And you got all these classmates in here, most of them, that do know what they're supposed to know or more. You come in, you don't know a single sentence in English, and this, is, this class is not for you. University level English ain't for you. How did you get in here? How did you get this far? How did you finish English in high school? And it was so dumb and so lazy that they wouldn't even tell me a full sentence in Arabic they wouldn't even say meaning I supplicated to Allah and he helped me. They wouldn't even say, say that. They would just say da da. They would think that saying the one noun twice is, is sufficient for a sentence. Da da supplication, supplication. Oh, okay. So you're one of them lazy niggas, huh? You don't even say full sentences in your own language. Do you speak fusa? La wallah. That means no, I swear to God, I don't speak it. Oh, okay. All right. So you really had no business being anywhere in an academic setting. You had no business with a high school diploma, but somehow you got one. I would say this to them and I would turn to the good students and I would say, these are students that have already cheated to get here or they bribed somebody. So beware of them because when the test comes, the quizzes come, they're going to want you to give them answers. And I'm going to tell you guys now, if they look at your paper and you didn't know, or they ask you for answers and you don't answer, you're not in trouble. But if you move your paper within their view, if you respond to them when they talk to you during the quiz, if you give them answers, or even if I catch one of them cheating and then you try to defend them, you cheated with them and I write the report for both of you. Do not defend them and don't come to me and say, doctor, go easy on him. He doesn't speak English. No, he's supposed to speak very basics, but he's supposed to speak that much. I'm not going easy on him because he ain't supposed to be here. I can't even include him in the exercises. What are you doing defending him? Well, he doesn't speak any English at all. Exactly. That's the problem. So why is he here and why are you defending him if you wouldn't learn language and became fluently bilingual, which you didn't have to do by this level? You came in here prepared for three levels ago. I mean, three levels after this. You were ready. You did your job. 
you practice you you and, and english and arabic are not related languages you came in here prepared for three levels ahead of this one this is a formality for you you're capable of helping them why are you instead coming to me and defending them and they didn't do anything that you did. So if you're one of them ladies that ain't out there playing these games and you ain't supporting that, that's fine. Don't come in here trying to defend those women to me. Go back and tell those ladies whatever you can get away with telling them. And if you can't get away with it, at least admit to me what they're going to do to you if you were to try to tell them and talk some sense into them. If you cannot go to them safely and talk sense to them, then tell us men how bad it gets. And don't say a, a, a father mucking word to us about what we need to check, even if it's just the tone. Because if you are silent about this, but then you want to say something to one of us, best believe if I find out who your son is, I'm, I don't care how young he is. If he can read English, I will reach out to him and tell him about this. Only that which is important. And I'll only do it once. But I might reach out to him and send him a nice email saying, yeah, this is what is this is how much easier it can be to live abroad. And don't say I'm going to stay here with my mama because you'll be a grown man by the time you do leave. And if she wants you to look after her when she gets old, that's fine. She needs to move under your roof and under your care, just like you have to live under her roof and her rules right now. That's fair. Thank you for listening. And to those of my normal audience that hit the share button for either one of them, thank you for hitting the share button. Thank you all for being patient with me for more than a half hour. I wish I could have kept it shorter, but hey, y'all know how this goes. As always, black heart, black mind, black out, assalamu alaikum, and black heterosexual, non-select male power just because they don't like it, and black patriarchy until extinction of judgment day. Thank you again for choosing Jet Black Airways, where Jet Black is also a verb. And we hope you continue to Jet Black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off. Justice forever. <laughs>